My name's Wayne Allen Root, war, as my friends call me. And uh, I'm a political guy as well as a business guy because we've got massive debt in the United States. Massive debt. Uh, we've got Obamacare that's exploding and causing more and more and more debt. We've got green energy and climate change obsession that will cause more and more and more debt. Spending, spending, spending. And the result of that is more and more debt, more and more deficit. It doesn't even matter who the president is. I'm a big fan of Donald Trump, but guess what? If Trump wins, he may cut your taxes, but I seriously doubt the debt's going down. If Hillary wins, the debt's going rocketing up. Now, all world governments are printing money like there's no tomorrow. Uh, 19 trillion in USA debt right now, soon to be 20 trillion by the time Obama leaves office, maybe an outside shot at close to 21 trillion on the day he leaves office. Every politician is a tax and spender. No matter who we elect, more spending, bigger government. So in either scenario, whether it's Trump or whether it's Hillary, there's very serious doubt that the national debt will be dealt with in any way, shape, or form. So in 2015, the national deficit, budget deficit, $439 billion. In 2016, it's estimated at $616 billion. Massive increase, and it's not getting any better. It's not a matter of if, but it's a matter of when the stock market crashes. Anybody here, I'd like a show of hands. Do any of you think the stock market is low and undervalued at this point? Anybody think that? No, exactly. The reality is GDP, I talk about this all the time. It's not in the media. GDP has been the lowest for the last eight years, eight consecutive years of any time in the history of America. Anybody hear that in the news? No, it's not in the news. Worse than the Great Depression. No president in American history has ever presided before over eight consecutive years of gross domestic product under 3%. Obama will be the first to ever do that since 1776. The average gross domestic product of the United States since 1776 is 3.55%. That's the growth, the average economic growth of America, 3.55% per year. Under Obama, 1.5% per year for eight years. Half, well under half, of the average for the last uh, 250 or so years. So in the past 100 years, we've had 20 major stock market crashes. And every single crash averages 36% drop. That's a drop of about 6,400 points today. If you extrapolate it out today, the market would have to go down 6,400 points. I want you to go back to what I said a minute ago. Does anyone think the market is at a low point now? It's the highest it's ever been. While I'm telling you the economy is by all measurements, facts, the worst it's ever been. I mean, it's a dream state, helped along by, of course, a very uh, strange media that seems to believe everything this government tells them and repeats it to you and parrots it. But that can't go on forever. Helped along by artificially low interest rates at zero. Helped along by quantitative easing. But soon we're gonna be out of bullets. The Fed has no more magic bullets. The largest stock market fall on record was 89% from peak to valley, 89%. And it took 25 years to come back to even. That was, of course, the 1929 crash. Seven of the crashes, seven of the 20 major stock market crashes were 40% or more. For every $1,000 you had in the stock market, you ended up with $600, and it could take you five or 10 or 25 years to ever get back to even. So this slide is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, take a look at it versus gold from 1929 to 1933. So between those four years, the stock market was down 89%. Gold was up 68%. Also important to note during that period, Franklin Delano Roosevelt confiscated Americans' gold. So in the middle of a gold confiscation, Gold went up 68%. In the middle of a massive stock market crash, almost 90% down, gold went up 68%. In the midst of the most anti-gold legislation in history, 
gold went up 68%. Here's the Dow Jones versus gold from 2007 to 2009. The Dow was down 52%, gold was up 73%. In every major crash, gold has either held its value or appreciated dramatically. During the four largest bear markets, gold was up an average of 156%, while the Dow lost an average of 52.5%. Wild stats, right? Pretty amazing stuff. Have you ever heard any of it on CNBC? No. Have you ever heard any of it on Bloomberg TV? No. Do you read about it in the Wall Street Journal? No. Their only goal in life, they're all salesmen, and their only goal in life is to sell you stocks. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even if you're gonna lose your life savings. Sell stocks, sell stocks, push stocks, push stocks, sell stocks, promote stocks. That's all they do. They don't, they don't give you the truth and let you decide. And so, you know, our company lets you decide. We give you the facts. And the facts are that gold is portfolio insurance. It's asset protection. Uh, it provides proper diversification because you just should never, knowing these statistics, have your life savings solely in the stock market. It makes no sense. It uh, provides top performance appreciation. It provides transfer, uh, transferable wealth without documentation. It's uh, totally private. It's uh, easily transportable wealth. It's liquid, extremely liquid. It's, uh, it's like exchange tax advantage, meaning if you have a collection of gold, you can actually transfer it for another collection of gold that's like, very similar, and not owe any tax on it. Uh, it is historically significant as an asset, as we've just told you, incredible track record, and it's got great artistic value as, when, as well. Many gold coins, rare gold coins, uh, are artistically designed by some of the great artists of the United States, hired by the US Mint. And the right coin, as a matter of fact, the right rare coin uh, is like owning beachfront property. It's far more valuable than gold, and we've got the facts to back it up. It's like owning a Van Gogh or a Picasso. The right rare coin is actually more valuable over history by far than gold. And that, those are the things that we offer at Tangible Investments. We offer both gold and silver, precious metals, and we offer rare coins. And we think if you're gonna buy them, you should buy them from a company that's been around for many decades, that has a great track record, that's 100% credible and reputable, and that gives you great educational in value that empowers you. Well, listen, I got involved with Tangible Investments because a good friend recommended that I get involved with SIL. And, and you always, you know, I'm a people person. Everything's about the people. Sill's a great guy, he's a credible guy. He's become a good friend. He's someone you want to hang around with. He's someone you want to trust. He's an expert. He, he founded one of the original founders of the company that grades the coins so everyone feels a, a sense of confidence when they buy a coin in the United States of America. He's the guy who started that organization. He's on the board of another organization. There's only, out of thousands, and I think it's 5,000 gold dealers in America, there's only 300 that are a member of this organization. He's one of the 300. You know, all the way around, everything that he is spells credibility, spells integrity, spells long-term expertise.